So about every year or so on this channel, we do a bit of a check-in on some games that were announced and went completely dark or even vanished. Whether it's a span of a long couple of months or a few years, <laughs> these games have just left us wanting to hear something about them. Anything, really. We got 10 games to talk about today, uh, and we probably have way more than 10, so maybe we'll do a part two. Let us know in the comments. But anyway, let's get started off with number 10 and talk about Perfect Dark. Yes, the big Microsoft Xbox AAA or really quadruple A perfect dark game that was announced a few years back with a flashy trailer. Seems like it's still a ways away and we've really heard barely anything official. The most recent report actually comes from IGN reporting about how the game has just had a lot of stops and starts, leadership changes, direction changes, and it actually reads a lot like not much drama or like red writing on the wall or bad vibes, but just regular typical video game delay stuff. Just random things that can happen that really drag down a game's development process. And that also is coupled with the fact that according to this report, development work had barely even started on the game when that trailer was revealed. They were still staffing up. And over the course of many months, we've heard about leadership changes and stuff like that. Matt Booty, head of Xbox, Xbox Games uh, has spoken about that and how work is continuing. Uh, he had even said on record that he had seen some versions of the game, but couple that with the most recent report from IGN, it seems like it's a long time before we see anything from this one. Of course, we now know that this new studio that was created to work on this game is also teaming up and kind of collaborating with Crystal Dynamics. And apparently that relationship is actually going pretty well. Look, with something like a new Perfect Dark game, I'll wait as long as it takes. I don't really care. I I'm just really curious to see what the hell does a Perfect Dark game look like in this day and age? Is it just gonna be another first person shooter? What what's the hook really gonna be? It has to do something different to stand out. And it's not really gonna have that rare DNA because it's a completely different studio. So what's gonna happen? I have so many questions with this one and I, I feel like my questions are gonna linger for a long time. Next over at number nine, let's talk about Metroid Prime 4. Now the last time Nintendo said anything about this game was when they announced Retro Studios joining in to help after Nintendo thought the current build wasn't up to their standards and that was back in 2019. I think we actually talked about this exact same situation in a video like a year ago. But in case you missed it, Nintendo's quote was, specifically, we have decided to have the producer, Kensuke Tanabe, work in trust and collaboration with the studio that developed the original Metroid Prime series, Retro Studios, in the United States, and restart development from the beginning. By collaborating and developing with Retro Studios, we believe we can make this game something that will meet our fans' expectations. So they have restarted development, and that was back in 2019. And, uh, you know, just three weeks ago, at the time of making this video, Retro Metro Studios put out job listings for storyboard artists. So while that's not like an official announcement or anything like that, they are seemingly officially hiring staff for the game still, with the job description mentioning working with cinematic leads to help maintain cinematic pillars, define emotional scenes, and just narrative story general stuff. So I take that generally as uh, they're still a ways away on this one. I'm glad that Nintendo got the Metroid Prime Remaster remake type thing out because it's great and it allows us to kind of bide our time while they work on that game. Maybe they're gonna do remaster remakes of Metroid Prime 2, 3. I don't know, but I expect it's more likely to see that stuff than actually see Metroid Prime 4 anytime soon. And you know what? With a game like Metroid Prime 4, take your time, guys. The original Metroid Prime is incredible, and all Metroid games are great, and they deserve love and care, so take the time you need to make it incredible. Make it worthy of Samus. Next over at number eight, we have Everwild. Remember that other rare game that was announced, that Xbox rare kind of open adventure, animal nature hunting thing? I don't, there's not really a good way to describe it, so I'm just gonna call it fantasy. This was announced a few years back, and uh, the last time we heard anything of it was October 29th, 2020. That was the last time Rare said anything about Everwild, and it was when they parted with the creative director. Microsoft issued a statement to outlets uh, talking about the departure, confirming it, and saying that 
Everwild's development would be in good hands moving forward, with Studio Head saying, We thank the previous creative director on all his hard work on Everwild and wish him the very best of luck for the future. The Everwild team is in good hands and passionate about building a game that will give players unforgettable experiences in a natural and magical world, which means pretty much nothing to me. Now, it's worth noting that about a year later, Video Games Chronicle ran a story about it being rebooted, and while there isn't an official statement about it from Rare or Microsoft, it does seem like that was the last time it hit the news cycle, and it's it's been a while. I think in this case, it's definitely okay, because if you ask me, that original trailer didn't really intrigue me, so at the very least, it's leaving me not with bated breath dying to see what comes next, what they're going to announce. Just maybe it's better that it's gone dormant for a while and when it comes out or when more is revealed, it's just an awesome thing. That's the positive person in me. You guys know I'm an optimist, but we'll just have to wait and see. Next over at number seven, though, we have to mention the Prince of Persia, the Sands of Time remake. When this thing was revealed, it looked a little rough. And after a bunch of delays, Ubisoft ultimately announced that they were shifting the development studio specifically to Ubisoft Montreal. That was announced in May 2022. Then it was delayed again. And really, like we haven't really heard much at all. The last official word from Ubisoft was actually in May of 2023 when the Prince of Persia Twitter account actually tweeted out, Prince of Persia, the Sands of Time remake won't be at the upcoming Ubisoft Forward event, but fear not, it's very much alive. That's all I need at this point for a game like this. I know what Prince of Persia is. I know I really like it. I know I'll probably play it, but just knowing that the project wasn't completely canned helps because for a while, it seemed like it was gonna. I know I keep repeating this, but like hopefully when this does release, it gets the time it deserves because I think we need the Prince now more than ever. And that's no slight to the spinoff game, The Lost Crown, that looks pretty sweet also, but just a good old fashioned Prince adventure, especially The Sands of Time, just a legendary game that not enough people have experienced, especially younger audiences. I hope it's as cool as it originally was back in the day. Now, next over at number six, we have Crisis 4. Do you remember Crisis 4? It was announced a few years back with just kind of like a flashy trailer. You know, a trailer that told us absolutely nothing about the game. There is literally nothing to extrapolate about a new Crisis game, but th that's pretty much been it. The only update we actually have for you guys is two months ago, Crytek, the developers, put out a video announcing that they are hiring for Crisis 4. And if anything, this just educates what a lot of video game industry stuff has been. Some games are announced uh, with not too much behind it because they are very much early in development and that is because they want to staff up. They want to attract new developers to sign on and help work on the game. It's the reason why a Splinter Cell remake was announced with absolutely nothing to show for it because they wanted to hire developers. They wanted to attract developers to take on the project. And that's the case here with Crisis 4. They announced it. We all memed about it melting our computers and we heard nothing. And really it was just about hiring. So don't expect Crisis 4 anytime soon. Next over at number five, we have Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. Now this one has been a painfully long wait. And since it was announced back in like 2019, late 2019, we've gotten tons of spin-off games in this world, but never a mainline entry. Something that we've been looking forward to for so long as fans of vampires, but also the original PC entry that is now like a classic. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 was teased in 2019, revealed in 2019, and then subsequently delayed and delayed and delayed into oblivion. And we barely heard anything about it since. We do know that when it was delayed in 2020 and then eventually delayed to 2021, the publishers Paradox Interactive cited the COVID-19 pandemic as well as a complete shift in development change. Yes, Hard Suit Labs was working on the game and and then they apparently were taken off the project and a new studio is working on it. So apparently it was that coupled with the pandemic and the jump to next generation consoles and a lack of availability of like PS5 and Xbox Series X and S development kits for them to get working on the game was why it got pushed even more. Then it was pushed to late 2021, then it was pushed to 2022, then it was pushed to 2023 with one of the most recent on the record statements from the developers and publishers was that 
a release window in 2023 for Bloodlines 2 is, and I quote, absolutely not impossible, and that a launch date may be announced soon. We have heard from the developers in July. They put out a blog post reassuring people that they are still plugging away at the game, but as of right now, no official real look at the game or anything. And that's an absolute far cry from when the game was originally announced in like 2019 because we got a trailer, we got box art, we got pre-order bonuses, all that type of stuff. And then after delay and delay and delay, all that stuff was taken away. So now we have nothing and all we can really do is hope for the best. Next over at number four, Hightail. Remember Hightail? Uh, uh, this is a big sandbox kind of adventure survival game, kind of like as a layman, as an outsider, like a Minecraft spin-off evolution type thing. It's from developers that were formed uh, the, it, from multiplayer servers in Minecraft. It's got funding from Riot Games, who actually ended up purchasing this studio. This is going to be a multi-platform thing, and people were seemingly very excited about it. But things have been pretty quiet, at least publicly, like in the gaming news world. The development team did post an update on their blog, June of 2023, and this was really about it. The quote is, we are excited to say that we have recently hit a major milestone, our first external playtest. Someone left the playtest labs unlocked and we managed to get our combat prototype loaded onto a room full of machines. We ran our participants through a series of exercises that ended with duels and team death matches. We tested an extensive number of systems for balance and flexibility, including player movement, abilities, weapons, armor, items, buff, and magic. And say what you will about this, this is good transparency. At least we're getting an update like this. But like in the public sphere, in the conversation, in terms of like flashy, exciting news and updates and trailers, Hightail has been pretty dark. But rest assured, it seems like development is still very much a thing. The game is still very much in progress. Maybe we'll see more soon. Next over at number three, oh, it's like we're, we are obligated to mention it, Elder Scrolls 6. Obviously the most recent Microsoft Activision Blizzard FTC hearings unearthed a ton of drama and a lawyer actually kind of let the beans slip that the game is projected for 2026. But really that was just a Microsoft lawyer who probably honestly just has a rough idea of things. Granted they're on the inside, but 2026 can be projected, but we all know the games developed <laughs> definitely get delayed. They shift, they move. So who knows? Also, that wasn't like an official statement or anything. Again, that was something that just came out of this FTC thing. Other than that, PC Gamer did say that, and I quote, Todd Howard described the sequel as being in pre-production back in June, 2022. Uh, but then it's worth noting that during that FTC hearing, Xbox head Phil Spencer said that it's five plus years away. So uh, we're gonna be waiting for a while. We can sit here, we can speculate, we can hash it out, you know, come up with fan theories. But to be honest, we'll save that for another video, maybe further down the line. Now, next down at number two, System Shock 3. Yes, another game in the Legendary franchise is coming. A lot of people forgot about that, but it was a thing. Now, it's worth noting that Tencent acquired the rights. That was in 2022. And since then, there has been no official word of whether or not it is still in development. And that's been it, really. You know, people speculate, there's a lot of things said, but my take is that Tencent is a absolutely massive monolith conglomerate. And at this point, System Shock is more of a niche thing. It's more of a classic gamer thing. And I wouldn't be surprised if Tencent people are in a boardroom and they're like, what is this game? What is this thing we have? How are we gonna make a bunch of money off of this weird niche PC title? Who knows? You know, Night Dive has said that it, it's up to them, really, it's up to Tencent. But at the very least, the System Shock remake came out and even though it didn't make the biggest splash in the world, it was pretty solid and old school fans seemingly are somewhat happy. So there is still potential for System Shock to live on. It's being held right now by a big corporate overlord. And we're just gonna have to wait and see what happens with this one? Now down to number one, of course, it's Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic Remake. This one, there's a lot of noise to cut through. There's been a lot of speculation, uh, different people working on the game, uh, different people leaving the game, but ultimately we haven't really heard a ton from this one. There have been so many leaks and rumors about different studios jumping on and working on it, but the bottom line, the big thing is that most recently in an Embracer Group yearly report, uh, Embracer Group being the holdings company that is going to be publishing and, and handling development of this thing, they still listed Knights of the Old Republic remake as in development uh, as of May 24th, 
2023, not too long ago. Now, if the rumors and reports are true and that Aspire, the developers uh, have kind of stepped off the project and Saber Interactive is now working on the project, if that actually shakes out to be true, that could still mean that the game is definitely a ways away. But at the very least, it doesn't seem like they've canceled it and that's good. The more Star Wars games, the better. I still can't imagine a Knights of the Old Republic remake, but the corporations are sure gonna try and give it a shot. So let's see. Of course, there are so many other games in development that we didn't have time to talk about today. Uh, some more recent like Hollow Knight Silk Song, which we still haven't seen uh, to some further off stuff. So let us know in the comments. There's always so many more games to talk about. So these are just quick updates. If you want to read up on these, we'll have sources and stuff linked in the description down below. But click the like button if you like talking games with us every day. We very much appreciate that. That's all we need. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.